Hey, Matt, we got some breaking news today uh, out of Ukraine. You want to tell everybody what happened and what's going on? Sure. So some information is a little bit slim on this. We we don't really have, know exactly what's behind it. However, a helicopter carrying nine people, including the Minister Interior Minister of Interior for the country of Ukraine, which, of course, is is currently under siege from forces from Russia, crashed in the city of Bravery. I believe I'm saying that correct. Yeah. And unfortunately, crash landed in or around a kindergarten and a residential building area. So we have some significant casualties from here. Uh, all nine individuals on the helicopter unfortunately passed away, including the minister. Right. Um, uh, at least one child, unfortunately, passed away who who was on the ground, and uh, I'm seeing somewhere in the in the area of 14 total are are dead, and then another 28 hospitalized. Right. So we have a pretty significant crash here out in the, in Ukraine, and again, uh, from what I've seen so far, I haven't seen any indication if this was because of a Russian missile strike or a mechanical failure. Yeah, well, we don't another. have to go into all those details. I think yeah. what's important is that we have a helicopter crash. Um, we've had one before carrying our NBA star. You know, our thoughts and mm -hmm. prayers to everyone involved in these helicopter crashes that have perished. But... The point of this one is that it hit our uh, school, and yes. the school children were injured. Uh, I think 11 injured, like you said, and one dead, yeah. at least for what we know right now. But the point is, you know, we we talk about this as, as emergency preparedness and business continuity, and how do we carry on? And um, right, I think when we look at these types of incidents, people go, "Well, that will never happen here." You know, it's bad <laughs> enough that they say the floods and the earthquake. We have we have major flooding in California right now. We're having yes. uh, we have wildfires, but there's some things that uh, just occur randomly, like this helicopter crash, mm -hmm. uh, airplanes dropping out of the sky. These things do happen, and you have to be prepared on how you're going to deal with them. Um, right. Uh, they're out of your control, but you should understand that if it happens, you need to activate your emergency operations center. You should have business continuity. What is the messaging that goes out? And the same thing with our pandemic. And I think, yeah. you know, so many times we get these responses from agencies and businesses. I don't need to worry about that. That's never going to happen. Well, we have two incidents we had the pandemic right. the pandemic just like yeah. i could i could tell you how many times and i'm sure if we brought uh some of my former colleagues on here you know uh that we get together from time to time and talk about the stupidity of things especially around emergency preparedness and that the pushback on planning for a pandemic oh my yeah. gosh and here we have it it happened before it's happened many times It'll happen mm -hmm. again. Uh, it just is a matter of when something catches on, latches on, and goes global. And yeah. so um, I think, you know, when it comes to these emergency plans, we got to take these seriously. Active shooter is a big thing right now. We're, we just saw just uh, last night, I guess, they discovered that six people up in um, Northern California were killed, murdered in their home, you know, yeah. these types of things. They're attributing that to potential cartel activity. It, it just is one of these deals where you have to be prepared. You have to practice. You have to run through the scenarios. And I was, I was discussing um, one where, you know, people have been working in companies for 20 years and never had any training on how to evacuate the building or what to do in this event right. or that event. And it just boggles my mind. But here again, this is an example. Wake up, folks, and make sure that you're taking these things seriously. I just can't explain it enough. And I don't know what your thoughts are on it, Matt, but, yeah. you know, it, it's like, what do you do when a helicopter drops out of the sky? 
I mean, honestly, that there just needs to be a plan in place. I, and I understand you're not going to necessarily have a plan in place for every eventuality. <clears throat> Obviously, the the scope of what can happen <laughs> is right. incredibly wide. There are so many different ways that things can go wrong. But I, I remember, um, you know, and I'm a little bit newer at this than, than Steve is. When I was first looking at safety policies under Steve, we were working with some districts that were in flight path for LAX. So when you fly down, fly, when they're flying down, and and it made total sense to me. Yeah, you have to prepare for. You don't know when one of those planes, as inexplicably as that might seem, that that might crash on your school site right. or at a city facility if you're a public agency you, you, you know you have to prepare for that and the massive energy the jet fuel the the, the, the you know the, the fire and the and everything all the damage to the facilities that could lead to other safety factors in and around the site you know yeah absolutely you have to consider that right so so it so the way I live, the only way to do it is to have a plan in place and be prepared to put it in place. And you're not going to look it up right when it happens. You need, <laughs> you're you need not to have. Yeah, I guess you could, you know, unless that plane or helicopter happens to land on your office and burns up your plan. Then what are you going to do? <laughs> yeah. Right. You, you know, so I, I mean, it's just like Steve is saying, it's all about preparation and understanding that no matter how small something the likelihood of something happening is you need to prepare for it i mean like we talk about the active shooter the impact that such an event has on a community on a school on everybody involved it so outweighs like everything else in life like if you're part of that it's a landmark event in your life yeah that you have to live with right. or deal with for the rest of your life uh, it's so critical and you may think well there's no chance this is going to happen and then it happens <laughs> right <laughs> you, i mean you know? yeah look look at all the things that have occurred in our in the uh, course of our lifetime you know the market crashes the housing collapse um the pandemic now inflation recession uh, those are just simple things. I mean, I, I can't even tell you how many floods uh, I experienced, you know, where I grew up. I wasn't directly affected uh, in the house or anything like that, but right. traveling through the area, uh, helping my neighbors, you know, those types of things. Tornadoes, you know, yeah. they, they ripped through. They just destroyed the St. Louis airport uh, several years ago. You know, so these yeah. things do occur. They occur frequently. And you have to have your plan in place and you have to practice, you have to prepare, you got to get prepared. And I, I even think about like um, one of our clients, we just did a big water project for them where we mm. replaced all their water and all their emergency bins. And, you know, people are like, well, why are you doing that? There's a drought and, you know, this and that. And it's <laughs> right. like, yeah, there, there is. And we're refreshing your water so that if there's an event... You have water to survive, right? Like, how yep. long can you go without food? How long can you go without water? How long can you go without air? And yep. uh, even the active shooters. I mean, we do training on that. And then we've had uh, clients that have been able to stop active shooters, you know. So mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's important. It happens. I think really the key after that event, after that emergency, is the continuity. And you just touched upon it, Matt. You know... It affects you. Look at 9-11 in the United States. People from other states are all affected by yes. this event that occurred. Um, you know, we all are connected in ways that we don't even truly think about on a daily basis. How many people, like when that event occurred and, you know, my, my former wife at the time... How many people, friends and family and people that worked in those buildings and, you know, people, yeah. you know, you just, you just know people everywhere. And so when these things occur, you're affected by it. And 
how you continue on is the next key because we do have to get back to business quickly whether that's private or public sector and I think you know when I worked for a large insurance company in in the Midwest uh, everyone's probably heard of them um, <laughs> but you know the business continuity manager sat behind me and you know it was discussions that we had all the time like what do you do for software what do you do for payroll right and one thing that people have to have is, is money so what do you do around that what do you do with ghost sites like how do you set up a site so that you can flip the switch and keep all the operations going um, right. how do you how do you reassign tasks for those people that are lost um, you know, clients have to be taken care of. The kids have to be taken care of. You can pause things for some period of time, but as we see um, that the effects on our psyche and on our kids really take hold. Look at what it, we're discovering around the pandemic and the, the destruction with the children and their education, Matt. What do, what do you, what's yeah. your response on that? Well, I mean, even I mean, the education obviously is key, but I think the 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 side effect that has really stood out has been the loss of social development. Right. I mean, how many times have we seen children return to school and they haven't been in school for like two years? Yeah. And they've missed that opportunity to develop socially, to grow as people in within the fabric of a human society because they're literally outside of human society for like two two years they're within the scope of just their home for that stretch of time and i just i you know there are going to be studies steve in 10 15 years as these children become you know young, young adults entering the workforce there's going to be studies about how many mental issues they have you, you know because they had a break in their social development, you know, yeah. uh, where they have troubles controlling Im impulse control, um, you, you know, or they they can't deal with with uh, adversity well, you, you know, can't deal with adversity. They have attachment disorders, all those types of things. I, I'm yeah. saying, um, you know, as part of an anecdotal story here, um, a close friend of mine, her family is very large, and uh, one of the the babies that was born during the pandemic. Uh, they've been at home uh, with mom and dad only for right. several years, and now she's two years old, and um, you know she she won't go to any of her family. She's afraid. She cries. You know she's latched on to mom and dad only, and you know we see this with the puppies as well. You know people that got puppies yeah. and the puppies are stayed home with their their owner for years. And then the owner has to go back to work, and now the puppy is, you know, uh, right having those effects. And and you know the premise is the same, that we get attached to things, and it's very hard to break free of those addictions and cycles and attachments and you know routines. And so yes. we are seeing that, but it, that's why it's important. It's also important to just understand like eighty percent of businesses that experience a fire fail after that yeah. fire within five years. And and it's because they don't have records, they can't get their operations up, people quit because they weren't paid, mm -hmm. right? Expertise leaves, a yeah. lot of things just, you know, fall apart because why? There is no plan. There's no recovery plan, there's no strategic yeah. plan for continuity of the business. And, you know, Matt and I were just discussing that, you know, what, what happens if something happens to me? You know, how does the business continue on? How does it survive? Right. What's our succession plan? Those types of things. So again, look at that in your family, look at that in your business, look at that as a public agency. And I think a lot of times we forego that. We focus on the emergency portion of it which we should right but we skip the continuity piece um because again we're short on resources all those right. things you know it's funny um weren't we just talking about having the ability to put someone in all these little places you know to handle mm -hmm. all these little aspects we just don't have yeah you know you look at the 
look at public most public agencies, uh, especially here in California. You look at the size of the city, Hermosa Beach, uh, what two miles radius, mile yeah. radius, uh, Manhattan Beach, couple miles, Redondo Beach, couple miles. You know, like you just don't have the kind of resources to have a risk manager. Um, a benefits yeah. manager, an HR manager, a you know person that's doing emergency response. It's like, okay, who do we put on this? And we, we're right. seeing that even with medical surveillance programs, they're just not there, right? Yeah. So the business continuity, it's got to be a priority. It's got to be a, a place to start. And I think we got a lot of it in place with the pandemic, you know, our operations and work from home and this and that. But there's so yeah. much more, and I think this helicopter incident just reminds me that we we have to deal with the emergencies. We have to look at all of them because they are possibilities, and we should discuss them. You know, that's what the hazard mitigation plans are for, the DMA 2000 disaster mitigation yeah. plans, to look at all hazards and take those into account. And I, I think that was part of it, too, is, you know, back to the policy development and the, the time and the effort. you got to have a strategy for that. And we, we'll do that in another video, give you some tips and tricks on plan development, policy development. Um, right. We're in the middle of a huge project on that. And I think, you know, sometimes we overlook some of the simple steps that can be taken. So we should do that, too. But what do you think the number one key for business continuity is, Matt? Having a plan in place and, and ready to go. Oh, that's too simple. Come on, man. <laughs> they want real insight. Real insight. Okay. Yeah. Uh, honestly, it's just understanding what challenges, or anticipating, I should say, anticipating the challenges that are going to come up after an emergency and having a plan in place for how to do that, or better yet, like putting yourself in a situation where you're not putting all your eggs in one basket. Like, for instance, I, I talked about, like, oh, the helicopter falls on the office and your plan is gone. Well, why is that plan only located in your office? Yeah, why isn't it yeah. on the line in the cloud? Why isn't it downloaded on your phone? Or why don't you have a backup copy in your car or somewhere else in the facility? You, you, you know, it, it just it's about understanding what challenges you could go under in an emergency situation how can you adjust it like you talked about having a ghost site set up so you can flip over like let's say heaven forbid you get like a ransomware attack or something like that and one side one side website gets attacked and and taken control of by hackers but you're able to flip it over to a ghost site that does exactly the same thing and has no no interconnection between the two so that you don't have uh, the hacker going over to the new site right you know it's yeah. anticipation yeah you know and and that's a whole nother topic and uh Man, that, that's a hard one to combat is, is the, you know, malware, ransomware type oh, yeah. issues. It's really rough. So uh, for me, I think it's the training component of it. Like it okay. It's good to have a plan and all that, but if you don't train on it, forget it. You know, you got to have the training right. to go along with it. You got to test the systems. And we talked about that in the active shooters where they they get an opportunity to test their little attendance taking on their phone versus this and that. And, and it's so important to run through those, yeah. test it, train it, train it, train it, train it, and test it, you know? Yep. So yep. Have, think about that next, folks, is yes, emergency plans. After that, business continuity. How do we continue on the business? What if we lose these people? And we see that, when, Matt, when we even just take out the principal on the drill and then the, the secretary has to run anything. Well, that yeah. that one's pretty good because the secretary is always up to, to snuff on the operations. But when right. we take the secretary away from the principal, oh. all hell breaks loose. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, right. uh, just to, to put a, an analogous uh, situation on your training example, Steve, uh, when do you learn that you have a leak in your roof? 
Yeah, when it rains. <laughs> when it rains. Exactly. Exactly. You got to do the training yeah. to know if you got a problem. Yeah, you got to do the test, man. Yeah, you yeah. got to do the test. Absolutely. All right, folks. Well, don't forget to check all of our little sites out. We got training on Udemy and Dollar Training Club and all our blog posts. And these are available on our blog web post as well as YouTube. So check that out. And we'll see you next time on the Risk Control Show. Be safe, everyone.